I want you to imagine yourself as a puppet. An outside force controls your face, making you smile, making you sneer, making you sad. An outside force controls your body, making you gesture, making you walk, making you dance. An outside force controls your voice, makes you shout, makes you scream, makes you say ridiculous things. People see you not as a puppet, but as the real you. They insist that what they see is real. You feel trapped. It feels like you're entering some sort of dystopic, alternative reality. I want to talk today about a new form of human puppetry, deep fakes. I'm an anthropologist of technology, which means I spend a lot of time thinking about how humans create new technologies and how, in turn, those technologies shape how we view the world. But what happens when that world turns out to be completely made up? Fake, simulated. Deep fakes are a product of deep learning. They use artificial intelligence to be able to map facial expressions onto moving images. So this is not just Photoshop or Snapchat filters, but the use of neural networks and other artificial intelligence to be able to more accurately and realistically map facial expressions onto moving videos and bodies. Last year, a user on Reddit amplified deepfakes by posting a free application called Fake App that would allow anyone to make a deepfake, as long as they had a facial database of different facial expressions of a person. Celebrities seemed like a natural place to begin to make deepfakes. Nicolas Cage has become a favorite subject for the production of deepfakes. Uh, we see here his face swapped onto Elrond from Lord of the Rings. Uh, we also see Nicolas Cage face swapped onto Rick Astley. Uh, that's right, the deep fake just Rick rolled you. Uh, Steve Buscemi is also a favorite topic <laughs> for deep fakes. Here we see the actor face swapped onto the body of the actress Jennifer Lawrence. Now, the idea of deep fakes is familiar to us. Many of us have seen instances of this, especially in movies. If anyone is a Star Wars fan and you've seen the Rogue One movie, at the end of the film, the Princess Leia enters the scene, played by a young Carrie Fisher. But there's only one problem. At the time the movie was made, the actress Carrie Fisher was not quite so young. She was 60 years old at that time. So how did the production do it? In the film, Carrie Fisher's features were mapped onto an actress, a younger actress, to be able to more realistically portray her at a younger age. The team used artificial intelligence and a very painstaking frame-by-frame -frame process to manually, in some cases, make this image more realistic. Last year, on Reddit, a user posted the exact same scene. They had recreated it using this free deepfake application technology. They recreated the scene in about 30 minutes. So Star Wars production budget was $200 million. Deepfake Star Wars, $0. Now, can you tell which one is real? And does that question matter when neither video was real to begin with? These questions take on a new meaning when we consider the dark turn that deepfakes have taken. Recently, people have begun to produce images of deep fake porn by face swapping celebrities' images onto existing adult porn videos. Scarlett Johansson, Rihanna, Emma Watson, and many more. These users are using publicly available facial sets of these women to put them onto adult, existing adult porn videos. And because this is the internet, and in the words of Scarlett Johansson herself, the internet is a vast wormhole of darkness that eats itself, many would say that things got even worse. People began to raise the possibility of political deep fakes. What would happen if you could face swap politicians? A computer science team at the University of Washington created a deep fake of President Obama. 
mapping his expressions and faces from past speeches, as well as using footage from other politicians' speeches to show the possibility of being able to use this technology in political situations. Now, sometimes political deepfakes can be funny. Nicolas Cage appears again. But sometimes they can begin to feel uncanny. And perhaps you can see where this is going. A deep fake of a politician announcing a ban, a strike, war. A deep fake of a news anchor explaining events that never actually happened. People begin to question if what they're seeing is true. And how can a democracy function if people cannot tell the difference between real and fake information? Furthermore, people begin to question real information, which perhaps could be falsified. You can see where this story is going. Deep fake propaganda leads to weaponized deep fakes. We begin to question everything. We fall into this existential crisis, lamenting the ends of reality. Everything is fake, nothing is real anymore. But, that is not where the story ends. Recently, teams of computer scientists and law enforcement have been coming together to make machine learning techniques to fight deep fakes and to detect them. These digital detectives create their own deep fakes to better understand how deep fakes are made and to be able to detect them. They look at factors like blinking patterns, breathing patterns, altered pixels, and other instances of where an image or video might have been doctored. These digital detectives describe their work as an arms race. They are good technologies working alongside the growing evil of deep fakes. DARPA, which is the research arm of the Department of Defense, recently launched a media forensics team to be able to better detect political deep fakes and fake news and fake information. And meanwhile, Reddit, Twitter, and a number of other platforms have issued bans on deep fakes although bans don't always work, and the exact ways in which these content will be moderated is a bit unclear. To that end, just last week, a bill was introduced in Congress called the Algorithmic Accountability Act, which would require that tech companies audit their machine learning algorithms to detect instances of privacy and security breaches like deep fakes. Now, Tech companies are currently required by law to report instances of egregious violence on their platforms, such as child pornography or terrorist propaganda or beheadings. So this new bill would simply expand that regulatory infrastructure to better detect these instances, to police these platforms, and to possibly criminalize deep fakes. But I want to suggest that while these new techniques do offer us a hopeful way out of the deep fakes quagmire, they miss some of the point. I want to suggest that we've been so obsessed with finding the truth, uncovering the real nature of these images, that we began to miss the core issue. We've been so obsessed with finding the truth that somewhere along the way, we equated truth with freedom, that somehow the new technologies are going to liberate us out of this deepfakes nightmare. But the fundamental problem here is that deepfakes are not a technological problem. They are a human one. So what does it mean when we only seek technological solutions to fight these deepfakes? Why, for instance, is the face swapping and body swapping of women for the purpose of producing porn not taken seriously? I want to point out that deepfakes were not being investigated through all of these digital detective methods until the threat of political deepfakes began to emerge. In fact, under the First Amendment, most deep fake porn is protected as freedom of expression or as entertainment. Deep fake porn is alarming for a number of reasons. First, that the faces of women could be used without their consent in sexually explicit videos. Second, that the bodies of porn actors could be used without their consent, which further still undermines and undervalues the paid work that porn actors actually do. Third, and perhaps most insidiously, if we consider actresses like Emma Watson, who've been acting since they were children, 
There are entire publicly available data sets of her face as a child. What's to stop someone from making deepfake child pornography? And I'm not just talking about celebrities. Recently, deepfake porn has begun to emerge of everyday people, your classmates, your friends. We provide the data that makes this technology possible. So I want to suggest that we've been missing the issue here. Why are we waiting for women to be the canaries in the coal mine before this issue begins to be taken seriously? What might happen if we began to think not just about the technological solution, but about the much harder, long solution? Perhaps we could begin to think of deep fake porn as sexual violence, and therefore as as critical an issue as political deep fakes threatening our democracies. Perhaps we could begin to think about how to protect our identities. Does our current legal infrastructure protect against the invasion of privacy raised by deep fakes? And perhaps more importantly, can we fight deep fakes without producing a surveillance state that regulates our every move online? Perhaps we can begin to think more expansively about consent. Rather than waiting for deep fake porn to happen, assuming it to be inevitable, can we creatively, proactively prevent the toxic culture that produces deep fakes in the first place? I'm not talking about easy technological solutions here. Part of what makes deep fakes so alarming is their perceived accessibility. In theory, Anyone can make a deep fake. Anyone has the ability to distort our reality. But I want to suggest that it is precisely that accessibility which is going to help us. For example, recently Amnesty International has launched a digital verification core. These are teams of human volunteers around the globe who fact check images and videos of violence. This is an open source project that is a solid example of bystander intervention one which we can adopt in the case of deep fake porn. So let's take on the deep fakes, not just with the technological quick fix. How can we demand the truth and real images when we don't respect real women's bodies? Perhaps the real simulation here is a fantasy of our own making, but we can fight it once we begin to take all digital manipulations seriously. Thank you.